Gracias por convidar. Thank you for inviting our input to this conference. It's hard now to take over after such a long and rich session because you feel hungry. I feel hungry myself. Let's keep it short. First, back to reality. We are a government run a school. I don't know whether I'm an implementer or an expert. Uh, some time ago, I was uh, digitally illiterate. Now, I'm, now I am a beginner. I know what a Mac is. I know that there are proxies. I know that there are many things I was not acquainted with. But we launch ourselves into the swimming pool at different heights, though. Some people uh, went to the depths of it. Some people uh, just had water up to the neck. Some others just uh, had a dip with their feet in it. Now, a newcomer gets a lifesaver and tries to find his own place in the swimming pool. However, we all get launched into the swimming pool. It is a project that's any one else. It's not either better or worse, but uh, perhaps uh, perhaps I should share it with you. Tony is the informatician behind it. He takes over. Good afternoon. This is my school. Let me keep it short. These are the five uh, mainstays of our school, one of them being uh, ICTs uh, for learning. Three years ago, we concluded Uparu scheme, we assessed that and decided to carry on with it, but using tablets for education. Our students, all of them, from grade one to three, high school, have their own tablets. In the tablet, they read digital books. They access the platform of the, of the school. They access the materials made by the in-house teachers. They download it, download them in the, uh, into the tablet. They use apps. These are snapshots of the inside of our uh, school. This is analogical and digital technology working together. Let's not uh, sweetheart this or that. Tablets are but a tool. Let's look for the best uh, device for educational purposes. We have tablets, we still, we still have pencils and uh, paper and pads, writing pads in the classroom. In fact, having so much technology, working together, so many mobile handsets in the classroom implied for us a challenge, that of making responsible, responsible use of that. Let me leave to year 12-13. As legally provided for, handsets are not allowed in. This implied an issue with uh, students. Uh, a handset is seen by the teacher and it gets seized by the teacher. There are issues with respecting privacy and uh, self-image amongst the students. Issues with red tape. A handset is seized by the teacher. The principal reports that to the parents to pick it up. The family gets a letter from the principal and they get angry at it. And they have to take a leave to go back to pick it up, more issues with teachers who have to pick up the handset respectively of the way it is used by the student. They can fully tap into the power of the handset as a, an educational resource to be used in the classroom since it has to be seized as soon as noticed. There, it is legally provided not to use uh, devices, handsets, in the classroom, it is over 600 devices for us to use in the classroom, all in all, as we counted. Now for an excursion, we talk about students, whether students use it for good or for bad, and how do we use it? Are we a good showcase for our children, for our students? Are we a good example? There are some cases, some snapshots of the way we deal with handsets. This may ring a bell in your minds. Needless to add anything. What uh, did we learn here? Who taught us? This is the challenge we had. 
in 2012-2013 uh, year. Uriol will tell you the way we dealt with it. We work in uh, uh, working areas, as we know. We invest time into working with several issues. For instance, ICTs. We have people from various areas, teachers from various areas, sharing this think tank. They deal with methodological issues related to ICTs. And this implies a challenge, what to do with the regulation. We can't use handsets, as we are told, so we are always challenging, challenging that. As soon as I notice a handset, I seize it as a teacher. 20, 30 students out in the corridor or, uh, or in the detention room because of having a handset in the classroom. This is the challenge. This team of teachers rethink, re-engineer what to do, how to allow handsets in, how to teach them, uh, properly use them, and uh, that it is incumbent, all this is incumbent on the student. For that, we look for information with the research work. We have conferences with uh, uh, our school leaders. There is a we looked for a USA school using a color-based code. Next, we devise a new protocol for my school. And uh, here, you are principals. You must make decisions. And uh, we have uh, conferences with uh, in-house teachers uh, where we read a protocol telling that uh, there are responsibilities concerning the proper use of handsets, uh, privacy rights, uh, confidentiality rights, good use, pedagogy, educational value. The faculty is told about it. The decision maker is a student about uh, how, to this, how to use it and which are the consequences of the decision are. If it is a case of misuse, it implies a penalty. Respecting the privacy and the environment, we can't violate the right to people's privacy. It is a sensitive issue in our agendas, in our school agendas. It is difficult to fix. They must be told about it, how important it is. There is a quote on using the handsets, uh, helping them use it uh, for only some purposes. We create codes. Blue implies that the teacher specifies whether the student can use inside the classroom the device or not. Our uh, classroom, workshop, library, yellow in the playground. Again, we say that in the playground it can be used. Though, though there are remarks and doubts about it, whether it is okay or bad. Also, they can use it when leaving or entering. They're walking with a Walkman, but uh, switch it off on inside. Code, red code. It is positively forbidden during exams, during tests, although those uh, for which ICTs are needed. Green code, free use. Uh, telling when the Walkman can be used or not. The photo camera, it's all in the mobile, so if properly used. The, the green code implies that the place where the mobile can be used. This is uh, shared in the teacher's conference. It is a very interesting conference, the one we had. We feared that years ago. There was a debate over smoking, not a debate over uh, handset utilization. It uh, raises trouble. We have been working on it with teachers from various areas. We got people from, uh, we welcome people from the departments. There is a conference and the faculty says, well, let's uh, test it for some uh, time and let's reassess it. Week one, students uh, think over the best way to use handsets, as proposed by us. They tell us whether they are happy with our suggestion or not, or the strengths and weaknesses in that, in their opinion, information shown in the classroom so for them to learn. There are banners and boards about it in the relative places. A standard uh, classroom implies uh, blue and red. Other codes don't apply inside the classroom. Currently, 
the faculty conference uh, says, well, it's worked for this long. Let's carry on with it. In our meetings, we approve of this system. Now we look for information on the mobile. We have educational apps in various areas. We need apps as designed by students for research purposes. Various cases, for instance, uh, physics. Uh, let me take a snapshot of the paper I had to deliver. It is allowed by uh, teachers. We score over the mobile, the papers by students. We have school-specific apps for the open day. There is a QR with information about our information for the public, educational apps for research papers for um, high school students, upper high school students. This is for the students' benefit. Let me selfish. It also goes to the benefit of principals. Why? Because it decreased the incidents the first year about uh, some 40 percent. Conflicts are not the usual ones. It is not the violent uh, challenge because we used to have because uh, student knows that he is free to decide how to use the mobile and he uh, it's okay with him if he if the mobile is seized by the teacher. Now survival of the principal and the teacher is not being threatened. There's only been one incident versus uh, last year's record. We've realized that we had no trouble with uh, mobiles in the playground. We realized that uh, the students uh, listen to music, listen to music, Music was not loud, it was not disturbing. These are snapshots of the playground and the handsets. The new students are the only ones who have, who have not understood which regulation of the school is about it. And that these are the results that popped up for us. Students feel happier, they've made their own decisions. They accept it. The faculty has also yielded somehow to it. So cohabitation is better in the classroom. It's easier to live together. Teachers feel reassured it is one more educational tool in their hands in the classroom. Families feel better about it. They are positive about it because they don't have to go back to the school to pick up the uh, mobile set seized by the teacher. They appreciate that we help students uh, become responsible for the way they deal with the students. As uh, parents they are, they like that uh, their uh, children make their own decisions. There are problems, of course, with it. There is trouble with it. There are difficulties, many, but they are softer and uh, more scarce. And with time, handsets, either tablets or PCs or mobile phones will be definitely allowed in the classroom. The tool in itself is a body tool. It doesn't improve the score, the report card of the student. For instance, yesterday my seven-year-old daughter asked me what a cell is. Uh, it is homework. And I remember my uh, book, uh, the book I had as a student myself in the high school. She told me, this is not a cell, Dad. This is not a cell. No, the cell is round in shape. On, on the paper, it is flat. And uh, he showed, she showed on the tablet for me that the cell is round and flipped it over. My seven-year-old daughter is telling me that there is a nucleus in the cell that is that, that that's the right shape. There is a difference between having a look at the cell on the paper and having a look at it on the tablet. And the teacher made for her a 3D cell for uh, the children to fumble with. And this implies better learning, more motivation. Technology helps us. It's not increasing our workload, but it does help us a lot, both the students and the faculties alike. Thank you.